bees. When we hear this word, we usually think of two things: they sting and they make honey. But that's really only true for one of our bee species, the honeybee. The common honeybee is only one of our bee species. Little did we know, there's about 3,600 of these species in the U.S. alone, and over 20,000 bees worldwide. And there's two categories of bees: native bees and non-native bees. This guy, this is the common honeybee. It's not native to the U.S. We brought it over here from Europe. There are less than 60 known non-native bee species in the U.S., and the other 3,500 or so of them, they're called native bees. These are the bees that have grown and evolved with the plants that they pollinate over thousands and thousands of years, and they come in all different colors, and shapes, sizes, textures, and abilities. A lot like us humans do. And these native bees, while honeybees, they live in hives. Most native bees, they live in the ground or in wood. But the most compelling characteristic for these native bees, for me, is their pollination ability and efficiency. Honeybees can't pollinate plants that require buzz pollination, like blueberries, tomatoes, eggplants, and many more. In fact. Honeybees fare far more poorly than native bees when pollinating a bunch of native plants and crops. Now, don't get me wrong; we definitely need honeybees, but right now they're responsible for a disproportionate amount of our pollination efforts, and their populations—they're suffering in both numbers and in health. We need them as part of our system, not the whole system. I could tell you a ton of reasons why bees are important to us, so I think it's really necessary that we understand what would happen if we lose them. And all we have to do is look to what's happening in Hanyuan County in China, where they're currently using humans to pollinate their orchard plants. And I don't know about you, but when we said we wanted job creation, I feel like this isn't what we had in mind exactly. <laughs> So, what can we do to help prevent this here?、It、seems really challenging, right? I mean, we hear of a bunch of different potential causes of bee decline. We got pests, pesticides, colony collapse. But what if we've been looking at this all wrong? What if what we think is a cause is actually a symptom, a symptom of something much larger at play here? And that larger cause, I believe, it's us. We might think that more bees live in rural areas with farms than in our yards, but there's actually a surprising amount of bee diversity in urban areas, because where you have diverse plants, you're going to have diverse pollinators. And our cities are home to lots of large parks and urban farms and other green spaces that are full of flowering plants and bees, which is great, but. Some of these bees, they can only fly a few blocks before they need more food. So if their next habitat spot is a mile away, how are they going to get there? It's as if we built cities without roads for these bees, because the real problem isn't if we build it, will they come? It's actually if we build it, can they leave? But there's a potential solution in a very Unlikely place, and that place is parking lots. Ben Joseph of MIT did a study and found that in some U.S. cities, parking lots cover more than a third of the land, making them the single most salient object for of the landscape in our built environments. And these parking lots, they can help serve as stepping stone habitats until the bees reach their larger destination points. There's three really important habitat characteristics to consider when designing for them, whether you're designing a park or a parking lot. And the first, bees need food year-round. Should come as no surprise. So do we.
But a lot of times, we have flowers that only bloom from, say, Memorial Day to Labor Day. By planting plants that bloom outside of that time period, we can help ensure that bees can find food when it's more scarce for them. And two, most native bees live in the ground, but they can't really nest in mulch. Try dressing only the front of your plant beds with mulch and leaving bare patches behind them to nest in. And three, bees need to be able to see or smell their food in order to reach it. But pollution can negatively affect their ability to forage. So by planting patches of flowers instead of individual ones, we can help ensure that bees can find their food on the way to their larger destination. We don't need to all go out and become beekeepers in order to save the bees. We just need to realize that nature isn't in cities. Cities are in nature, and we need to start treating them that way. Because if bees can think outside the hive, so can we. Thank you. Thank you.